Team BMC have been one of the, if not the dominant force in team time trialling over the last few years and we have the privilege of following them today as they prepare for the opening team time trial at the Vuelta. Here now with Marco Pinotti, who is known as the Professor as a rider. He's certainly living up to that name since he's retired. Now a key part of the performance team here at BMC. Yes, I work as a coach and I specialise in time trial training and uh, team time trial. That's why I'm here in Spain. So you've just uh, kindly let us follow the team. They've done a couple of efforts uh, in the team time trial formation today. Uh, give us the idea behind those efforts in today's training ride. Yeah, the basic idea is just uh, to remind them uh, the kind the, the type of effort they're going they are going to do next Saturday. We do this a lot in training camp and uh, other moments during the year. But uh, those those riders particular they have never been together, so it's good to have uh, those feed, those uh, feelings again of going hard and uh, technical skill. It's just a, sh a short reminder, and then uh, we get an idea of uh, of the of the line as well, even if. Uh, the course of Saturday is different, it's more technical than uh, the one we use today because, because the traffic is open. You love a good time trial, don't you, both individual and team time trial. Uh, very successful at both, but what are the uh, secrets behind a good team time trial? Uh, well, you have to start fast, but not, not stupid. So it's really about measuring your effort as a team and um, really it's, uh, it's about keeping everything smooth, uh, fast if it's uh, through a corner or up a hill, uh, making sure it's like a uh, like a team's pursuit, you want to go as fast as your slowest rider. Um, and if you have to finish with four, you go as fast as your fourth rider. Does that mean you have to hold yourself back sometimes when there's some non-time trialling climbers in the squad? Yeah, there's a, there's a fine line, obviously. I might pull longer and someone else pulls shorter, but the key is to basically everyone gets to the finish just as buckled as one another. Um, everyone does the same amount as, of work as uh, each other um, relative to your specialty. Through training we've seen that also what we, we thought were not uh, so strong. They played an important role and we have across the team uh, most of the riders that have been winning a, a team time trial with us. So that means that uh, we don't win because we have certain riders, we don't win because we have certain riders and because we train a lot. Okay. One question I'm interested to know the answer to. Uh, here at the Vuelta all your guys are quite big but sometimes there's a, a big discrepancy in the size of riders so in that situation how you, do you decide the order on the road because of course a tall rider is not going to get much benefit from drafting behind a small climber. Yeah it depends on the course but let's, let's say on a straightforward uh, flat course uh, in extreme cases we even decide not to the, the rider not to pull like we had last year at Apuma most of the time was just sitting up in the last position. Other time we average rider like who are considered a climber like Caruso, they can do a pretty good job and just uh, uh, do a shorter pull or uh, play a certain role uh, in some part of the races and while sitting up on the others. I have to say it is very impressive up close. I mean, it's all very well banding about these numbers like 60 k's per hour on the flat, but that is actually uh, what we are doing on the speedo here at the moment on a completely flat road just in training. But it's like poetry in motion, they're just so smooth. Uh, this is Jürgen Laundrie, who's actually a former teammate of mine from 2004, quite a long time ago now. Uh, he's now a performance mechanic and he only works on these time trial bikes, which I think is something fairly unique even in the World Tour. Uh, when did that come about, Jürgen, that you transferred from working on all bikes to just the TT bikes? Well, it started a few years ago uh, because it's always difficult when you have a Grand Tour and you have uh, the, the time trial bikes in the truck. Um, they take too much space. So for me, my job started as just traveling with the time trial bikes. And uh, then, you know, you get into the details with all the bikes. And then uh, I got that job from the team only to focus on, uh, on time trials. Because as the bikes become increasingly aerodynamic and slick looking, presumably they get slightly harder to work on as well. Well, it is because all the cables there are inside. Uh, of course, that, that's an advantage for aerodynamics, but 
The problem is you don't see what's happening inside, so it's really something you have to focus on. All our bikes are perfectly looked after by Jürgen. Um, and really, well, we can't be any more uh, better off when it comes to equipment. We've got uh, the best wheels we could possibly have, and, and the bikes have been, they've been working on them for four years in the wind tunnel uh, to develop this uh, new tyre machine. So um, we've got no excuse. Uh, behind the scenes they work really hard just to make sure the bike is fast and and uh, especially with myself they, they've done a lot of testing uh, in wind tunnels on the track um, for helmets, skin suits uh, and everything so I've got no excuse except for I haven't trained hard enough. With the specifics of this course uh, on Saturday uh, around Neem, very technical in the beginning, a couple of corners at the end as well so there's, there's not that much of an opportunity for the riders to, to really put the power down so what will be the strategy uh, for something like that? Yeah, you made a good point. Uh, first of all, I, we want to see the course when it's closed on Saturday because it always makes me, it always looks more technical than, uh, than it is but this is a course where you never find the, the rhythm it looks like so uh, it will be I think the margin will be uh, smaller between the teams and uh, we need to maybe use uh, more riders who are uh, who have a good uh, driving skill with the time trial bike one final question. Uh, in Rowan Dennis, you've got one of the strongest individual time trialists in the world. Uh, can that sometimes be problematic to have such a strong guy in a team time trial squad? Can he put the others into the red? Let's put it this way. I'd rather have Rowan Dennis than not having it. <laughs> <laughs> a huge thank you from GCN to Team BMC for allowing us to follow them for the morning. I uh, hope you found that fairly fascinating as I did. Incredible watching them out on the road in full flow, even in training mode, I have to say. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, you can do so right now by clicking on the globe. If you'd like to know more about the opening team time trial that they'll face on Saturday, you can click just in this corner down here. Or if you would like to take a look at the latest GCN show, you can find that just down here.